is my tackle box. My favorite lure of all time is that one there. I love that color. There's nothing like casting out a swim bait over and over again all day for the hopes of getting one fish. I'm not being sarcastic either. Man, I just can't do it. Ah, the wind swell is just too big. I gotta leave. Tomorrow, I'm gonna come out here again and I'm gonna get this catch and cook made. This is another one that's been on my bucket list. I'm gonna scratch it off tomorrow. this out. Can you see the swells coming in? There's one right there. There's one behind it. You can see one coming off in the distance. So that distance is about like 10 seconds apart. See so if you see a big rock like that and you want to fish off of it, you got to be extra careful because it looks like no waves are crashing on it. But if it's wet like that, a wave is going to come up and smack it like that. You can get washed off really easily. A lot of people die like that every year. Like over 300,000 people die every year from drowning. Just last week at Bodega Bay, some people got washed off some rocks and they died. They ended up dying. I right, see these huge waves. There's no way that if I throw the swim bait, it's going to do anything. No way if I throw a bait, it's going to stay out there. So the only chance to catch fish in these conditions is to wait between the sets. My plan right now is to cast out here where it's calm. That's when I think the fish should come out and start feeding. I'm gonna switch over to bait. Got a high-low rig, shrimp and squid, size two watt hooks, and we're gonna catch the fish right now. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Swell is low. Cast out not too far. Pretty shallow actually, I mean close to shore. I feel like I should be out about another 20 feet though. Leave it here for a minute. No, well, oh, that was a nice bite. I missed it though. Let's try that again. Casting is kind of dangerous up here. Don't lose your balance. Ooh, I like that spot. Damn, I keep missing him. Took my shrimp. Didn't touch the squid at all. Got one, but he's stuck. Come on, swim free, little baby. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Might be two of them on there. Come on, guy. Yes. Come on, get out of that hole. He's on there. He's just stuck. Give him some slack, see if he comes out. Got him, got him. Ooh, look at that perch. That is a big perch right there. Oh no. That's a slab of a perch. 
got him nicely too. Man. Now while they're biting, I might as well see what else I can catch. Bit on the shrimp, by the way. Let's see when I'm baiting it. I'm just making sure that the hook tip is exposed a little bit. Because that way if they peck on it, then they're more likely to get the hook, you know? And look at this juicy piece. How can anybody resist that? In my lifetime of fishing experience, I found that the farther you cast out, the more likely there's gonna be snags. So if you're in a high place like this, you just cast straight out and pull it straight up. And that way you avoid as many rocks as possible. All right, I'm waiting for this wave to pass. All right, same spot. Perch love shrimp. It's one of their favorite foods, it seems like. Got another perch. That's the perch hole. That's where I just caught my last one too. So this is a striped surf perch. also known as a rainbow surf perch. He bit on some piece of shrimp. And I'm gonna release him. All right, little guy, live to see another day. So with this one, I'm actually going to bleed him first so the blood gets out of the meat. How I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna hold him like this with my knife, I'm gonna cut the gills. You can do this with any fish. Fresh water or salt water. Makes the fish taste better. Just gets the blood out of the meat. So the way I'm gonna clean this fish is how my dad taught me. Um, it's actually not just a simple filet. Actually, just let me make sure he's dead. I'll just stab him in the head. All right, if he wasn't dead, he's dead now. So, in front of the gills, closest to the mouth, that's where you're gonna cut. Now, very simple to take the guts out. You stick your thumb down his throat, get a good grip, hold its head. The two fins will come off. You don't want to eat those. You're going to want to cut on top of the fin all the way down. Same thing on the other side, just like I did with the eel. So you see how I only have this pocket knife? I don't have a fillet knife. So if I wanted fillets, I wouldn't be able to get the skin off by a fillet knife, you know? But this is another method. So you got the skin on both sides cut of the spine. Then you just take the front part out Oops, I accidentally took the head off. So once you get the spine started to come off a little bit, you can just rip it off, rip it straight out. So the top fin is off. Just do the same thing on the bottom fin. All right, both fins are off. Now to take the skin off, you just cut along inside the skin part here a little bit, just to get it started. So now that's off. You can literally, literally just pull the skin off the fish. See that? No scaling necessary. Same thing on the other side. Yeah. 
two skins and you got your fish almost ready to eat now that you've got the skin off now you can make two fillets out of this fish so there is still a spine in here so you just want to follow the spine if you take your time you'll have a lot more meat on your fillets now there are bones in here there are pin bones so you got to be careful you could actually just take those out by cutting along the center and along the other side near the center and now it is a boneless fillet so once you cut through the pin bones then you can skip you can cut along the rib cage these are two fresh fillets right there now I got to go down to the danger zone to rinse these off. I don't have any water. Now you can see on top of the rock, there are some dry spots. So you know it's been a long time since the wave has crashed over. And I know that it's low tide right now because, well, I checked the tide before I came. So let's use this old rope and climb ourselves down. So even though some of these rocks are dry, I still gotta be careful of these waves. Rinse them off in the salt water real quick. Two nice perch fillets right there. You know, if I was gonna do a catch and cook, I wouldn't leave home without my butter, but it seemed to all have melted almost. But whatever, you know, it's just like marinade now. So this is what we got right now. It's just salt, pepper, and mesquite seasoning mixed with butter now. Ah, look at that, two seasoned pieces of perch. As you can tell, there's not much room to work with over here. There, that's a little bit of butter. I know last time it was a little excessive. So a ton of people have asked me where do I get this uh, cooking set and the stove? Well, I just got it from Amazon, honestly. Actually, this stove I've had for my, my whole life, as long as I can remember. But this little pot and pan, I got it from Am Amazon for like $16. If you're interested, the link's in the description. Now we wait. I'm not giving up on that lingcod either. I mean, today I am, but I'm going to get it. Doesn't that look pretty good? Ooh, my mouth's watering. I'm trying to think of a way to describe how it tastes. And I don't know, if flaky had a flavor, then this would be it. Flaky. It's pretty unique. It's really mild, subtle taste. I think you can definitely tell it's the saltwater fish. It's not like the trout, I'll, I'll admit that. But it's pretty good. I've noticed sometimes when I'm in a room alone and I leave the room and come back, something smells like fish. And then I realize it's probably me. But all I got to say to that is fisherman's life. 